Welcome back to part 2 of how to immigration to Norway. Uh, today I'll cover the topics of culture and climate, which will be interesting as well for uh, every one of you who's not interested to immigrating to Norway, but in Norway in general. There's big differences. Norway is at the smallest, only 6.3 kilometers wide, but it's 1,700 52 kilometers long and there's big differences in uh, between northern Norway and southern Norway there's a lot of differences as well between different fjords both in the dialect and the mentality in northern Norway many of the fjords were only accessible by boat during winter depending on the weather there could be a long long periods of time where they weren't accessible at all and that reflects in the cult local culture and the dialects as well so to dive deeper into the culture in general it's uh, widely known that Norwegians are friendly but rather reserved and that counts especially for southern Norway. People are very political correct. It takes long time to build friendships and relationships. Northern Norway is a bit different there because the further north you get, the more direct people are. But still, it takes time to build up friendships, relationships. The thing is, if you finally manage to, to get your, yourself a social network, they're extremely loyal and you will have them basically forever. So, but be prepared if you plan to stay in Norway for a longer time or even moving here on your own, uh, you have to cope being alone for quite a while. It took for me, it took around uh, one year to uh, actually establish uh, some social network and I'm in northern Norway it might be uh, in some places in southern Norway even more difficult again here language is key of course as I already told you in the last vlog in part one another thing about Norwegian culture is it's very family oriented so uh, children are like above everything and have a lot of right and there's a lot of organized activities good schools daycare everything for kids and as well help for for families in general and as many of you might know social equality and welfare is a big topic in Norway so they have, have basically the world's best welfare system with that said don't be shocked if you meet like everyday racism especially in, in the very north of Norway they can be very direct and some like it like I do I really like that the northern Norwegians are very direct unlike many of the southern Norwegians that are very like polite and don't really tell you what they actually think most uh, Norwegians have very strong local bonds with family and with the friends they grew up with with the uh, history of places and don't move that much of course for school for university they are moving a lot and it's generally in Norway as well people are more moving to the bigger cities but Norwegians in general have quite strong local bonds as well in, in the organized clubs and stuff and that's part of the problem you're facing when you're coming to Norway staying here long term because they grew up with their social network Norwegians so they don't really have any urge to like expand in their social network. One good tip here is um, join a club. There are so many clubs, in most places at least. Just look what uh, what clubs offer activities that suit your interests. Like if you're into hiking, that big part actually of Norwegian society in general. And there's the Norwegian Hiking Association, which has organized tours as well. And that's a great point to start to uh, get out and get to know people in general if you have a common interest with other people it's like in every country the same it's much easier to connect one other thing is the love for nature in Norway in general I am very proud of the pristine nature and outdoor life as big as a role as it did before but it's still a very important part of the Norwegian culture so like hiking skiing is something every Norwegian does 
as soon as they are able to walk. That reflects as well in everywhere in the culture, like uh, the culture for, for cabins, like every Norwegian family that can afford it has a cabin, at least one cabin in the mountains. If they can afford more, they have one cabin at the sea as well, or only one at the sea. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of cabins all over Norway. That's again part of what is more or less internationally known as uh, hygge, which means kind of coziness. So for Norwegians this coziness is really important, whether it's on the um, isolated cabin with no electricity, no water and just candlelight or being with friends and family about around the campfire. It's this very Norwegian word hygge and it's an important part of the Norwegian culture, especially during northern Norway especially during the polar night because not everyone copes as well with the darkness so that's time for friends and family and to yeah, we go to the cinema together watch a movie together have board game evenings together whatever it is a lot of possibilities but that's an important part of the culture so another difference in the culture in Norway is there's a minority that's mainly living in the very north the Sami which are the natives in northern Norway as well as Sweden, Finland and, and Russia. And their culture was, for a long time it was suppressed, like many other countries, uh, Norwegians tried to force them into the Norwegian culture, which caused a lot of damage. And they, for many years already now, uh, trying to re-establish their culture. And the culture is a little bit different from the Norwegian. They're usually small as well as the Norwegians, but it's like in Northern Norway, it's quite mixed. So the Northern Norwegian culture is a lot, has a lot of influences from the Sami people. You might recognize them when you see their colorful traditional outfit. I'll just link a picture here, here right? just uh, somewhere here. I, I'll put a photograph of the, the Sami outfit. It's very colorful and very, um, yeah, it looks like very happy traditional outfit. So if you ever plan to stay in Norway for a longer time, remember that the uh, culture is very different in the different places and try to get a little bit around in Norway. So I was visiting Norway for seven times before I actually moved here um, just to experience the, the culture at different places and see what really suits you. Not everyone copes with the uh, very direct communication of the northern Norwegians and uh, otherwise not everyone copes with the rather reserved culture of the, of the southern Norwegians. The northern Norwegians are not only just direct but they swear a lot as well pretty much the first thing you'll learn in Norwegian if you don't speak Norwegian before you come here um, yeah they're swearing a lot while in southern Norway it's like a very bad habit to swear it's very especially on the countryside and in northern Norway it's part of the culture and uh, yeah, the common language one example um, that every Norwegian heard a thousand times is now there have been several cases actually in the northernmost part of Norway, uh, Finnmark, which is the, uh, the biggest state in Norway. It's completely okay or completely okay. You, <laughs> you can't get any charge for calling a policeman a uh, horse penis. Of course, it's a very normal word there, which isn't an insult in the very north of Norway. There have other people been charged uh, that are not living in the very north when they used it because it's not normal language in uh, further south but it's very normal in the, in the very north in Finnmark for example. Uh, so it started with a policeman that sued one uh, person from Finnmark for calling him a his penis uh, first I think it was in 1997 uh, where the court declared that it's a normal language there and it's not an insult at all and there have several, been several cases after that as well but it showcases quite well uh, the different uh, language between north and south and the different cultures. Next part is climate. Many of you have heard about uh, midnight sun and arctic or polar night in Norway and that's a phenomenon that appears north of the arctic circle so um, don't confuse the Arctic Circle with the border to Northern Norway because Northern Norway officially starts south of Trondheim already and the Arctic Circle is right south of Bude which is like yeah several hundred kilometers in between. 
Uh, so Northern Norwegians often say that Northern Norway is starting with Bode, like everything north of the Arctic Circle. That means basically in during winter time from usually mid to end of November until the end of January, the sun doesn't rise over the horizon at all. That doesn't mean it's dark all the time. Like everywhere else, you, it, you have light before the sun goes up and you have light be after the sun goes down. So around winter solstice it's actually the darkest time where it's really just one hour at twilight and then it's uh, dark again but before and after it's changing rather fast you have the midnight sun and then it's getting darker about 10 to 15 minutes depending where in northern norway you are it's getting uh, darker earlier every day uh, so days are getting shorter very fast but they are also getting longer very fast so uh, in the beginning of january you already recognize that there's much more daylight so it's pretty fast and then from about the middle end of may the sun doesn't go under the horizon anymore so it stays up all day long until the end of august middle end of august as i said it depends always a little bit uh, where in no or in arctic norway you are the further north you go the longer is the the midnight sun and the polar night midnight sun sounds like it's a different sun but no it's the same sun it just doesn't go down it's making its round and it's going slightly down but before it touches the horizon it's just going up again so it's daylight all night long and the nice thing is the temperatures both under the, and during the polar night and during midnight sun temperatures are rather stable because there's not no day and night rhythm and regarding the temperatures, uh, Norway is mainly coastline and is strongly influenced by the Gulf Stream. So it's not really that cold along the coastline. Temperatures are usually between 30 degrees plus in summer, Celsius, and about minus, down to minus 20 maximum. Usually it's about plus 20 in summer or even a little bit less and about minus 10, minus 15 during winter time. And the further you get away from the coast, the colder it usually gets. It doesn't count really for all areas, but you have the continental climate that you have in northern Sweden and Finland and where it's getting really cold uh, that don't have the influence from the Gulf Stream. Uh, like in the eastern part of uh, Finnmark of the very north temperatures are dropping down to a minus 40 degrees or even yeah so um, there the the continental climate is much more dominant and it gets uh, way colder than along the coastline but conditions are in general in Norway rather unstable and changing fast so this winter so far has been one of the wettest maybe ever we had a lot of rain, there's snow as well, of course, but there's a, a lot of rain and temperatures are often several degrees plus, which is quite unusual, at least over long periods of time. But same counts for summer as well, or early summer as well. Um, it can, you can have snow in June and it's suddenly snowing and like even in high summer the temperatures can drop down to 8 degrees plus. So it's varying a lot. So if you ever come to Norway, um, no matter what reason, be prepared that conditions are changing fast, have proper clothes and the right attitude. So if you're planning to spend a nice summer weekend in, in Norway, you might get disappointed. So rather plan a little bit more time so that you're more flexible, both regarding to places, because it can rain without a break at one place and there's sunshine on another place so that you're flexible. And that counts as well, of course, when you're hiking in Norway and when you're here on holidays, the weather in the mountains might change really fast. So you can go with short trousers, t-shirt the one day and then the next day you wake up in your tent or your cabin and everything is white. So just uh, keep that in mind. And as well, the fact that the climate zones in Arctic Norway are actually compressed. I'll see if I find some good information that explains it a little better than I can uh, and I'll put a link down below. Um, but that means like in the Alps you have the tree border at around 1800 meters for example. In Arctic Norway it's 
much lower. It's between, depending on where in, in Arctic Norway you are, it's between 180 and maybe maximum 300 meters. So the climate zones are compressed, so above 500 meters you only have rocks, while well, you still have like a big forest in the Alps. But it means as well the, the weather conditions can vary a lot in those different climate zones. Norwegians have in general this, can call it great optimism, have this more or less positive view, so even if the weather is bad and bad over a long time, they would just say we know where we're living. And that counts especially for the for the west coast of Norway because there's a lot of rain, especially Bergen is, uh, which is very known uh, you sure have heard about it it's known for a lot lots and lots of rain but it counts for the whole west coast in addition comes that they have very strong dialects along the west coast whilst in in general in in, in southern or along the west coast as well as on the countryside they have really strong dialects um, which is different in northern Norway. They have different uh, dialects, but they are not as easy to understand if you have learned Bukmal, the, the written Norwegian language, because of what I told you earlier, this uh, suppression of the Sami people, and everyone was forced to speak Norwegian, and of course they learned this, this written Norwegian. So they have the dialect, but it's easier to understand than most of the rest of Norway, actually. Yeah, so that was the quick overview today over culture and climate um, if you want any more information because there's it's it's like for everything I tell you I could make a, a own blog and because of course it's it's a lot to cover so right now I'm just giving you kind of an overview and uh, if you want more specific information about the topic just uh, write down in the comments and I make a own blog about it, or or at least I can give you answers uh, from my experience living here in, in northern Norway for the past five years. So un unless you want to really dive deep into some of the topics, this is the second and last part of the how to immigration to Norway vlog, which is meant to just give you a general idea what to expect, uh, what to be aware of, how to actually get to Norway or into Norway. Yeah. But I'll see you in the comments and like, subscribe, hit the bell and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!